Well, thank you very much, Dr. Curtis, for your wonderful introduction. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here this evening with two goals. One is to thank you individually, repeatedly, and sincerely for your support of Iranian culture. The second goal is to talk about the process of recreating historical sites in Iran from Susa to Sepahan or Isfahan. Uh, in one of his most powerful poems, Omar Khayyam writes, could you and I with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire, would not we shatter it to bits and then remold it nearer to the heart's desire? Khayyam's hunting poem gets to the heart of the challenge that faces archaeologists and artists in the research how can we remote the past and communicate our findings to scholars and the public when the surviving remains are so scarce and so little? How can we reconstruct what was lost, understand what we have found, and represent it accurately when all we have to work with is a sorry scheme of things, as Khayyam mentioned? In the past 12 years, my highly dedicated team and I have tried to address the poet's challenge by remolding the present bits of information and in a long and difficult process have attempted to picture many ancient and ruined historical sites in Iran. The result has been six packages as Dr. Curtis mentioned. The first one, is called Persepolis Recreated, Shokuhe Tachte Jamshid. The second one is called Haf Ruche Farruche Iran, Iran, Seven Faces of a Civilization, with a foreword by late <coughs> Professor Richard Fry. The third one was called Incredible Isfahan, Shokuhe Sepahan, with a foreword by Professor Sayyid Hussein Nasr from George Washington University. The fourth one was recreating Pasargade, which was created with the direct help of Professor David Stronach from the University of California at Berkeley. The next one was called Discovering the UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Iran, with a foreword by Dr. Bokova, the general director of UNESCO. And the last one is called 5,000 Years of Iranian engineering, which was produced commemorating the 80th anniversary of the foundation of University of Tehran, the first university in Iran. Now, all these packages include a DVD and a companion book. But for the first time in the history of publication in Iran, we have used transparent overlays to do the reconstructions in the book, as you will see in these few examples. These are the polo posts in the Meidane Nakhte Jahan in Esfahan, for instance. And the next one would be the Chohar Bagh, the famous gardens of Esfahan, which do not exist anymore. But how are these sites digitally reconstructed. There are three pillars for each reconstruction, science, art, and imagination. Today, archeologists, geologists, and other scientists are able to make progressively better images of the past by using new technology, satellite imagery, aerial photography, geomagnetic research, and so on and so forth. Now, we have used these technologies with the help of many renowned scholars throughout the world. Throughout my presentation, I will have a few case studies of each point. Now, with regard to scientific approach, what we did was to use the data available in Pasargade mainly collected by Professor 
David Astronaut. He started his, ex his excavations in 1961, when I was only one year old. <laughs> but today, using aerial photography, we can use the data in order to make the reconstructions. For the first time, with his help, as well as the geomagnetic research that was carried on in Pasargade under the supervision of Dr. Remy Bouchala, we were able to picture new parts at Pasargade. For instance, what you are seeing over here is an artificial lake, which was never mentioned before. This lake helped us greatly in our reconstructions. This is the site with the lake. We had the remains of a bridge over the lake, which became as such. And of course, the famous fourfold garden scheme. Using the aerial views, we, we are able now to see the fourfold gardens and the beautiful landscape that was carried out in this paradise gardens, as they were called, paradise. Now, the second part, pillar is art. Most of our reconstructions need a bit of creativity. A good example for this would be the city of Isfahan. Now, many of you have seen or have been to Isfahan. And as you know, we have the Ali Ghafur on the eastern part, western part of the Maidan. Now the Ali Ghafur or Sublime Gate is at this state, almost totally ruined. We wanted to reconstruct this. According to information that we gathered, because it was made during the time of Shah Abbas II, where or when the Chehel Sutun or 40 uh, column hall was made, it was deducted that they, they had used mirror board on the pillars here. So consulting our engineers in Iran, we did the reconstruction. The whole thing was done with mirror board. This is a general view. But suddenly, out of pure luck, something new happened. Now, I have traveled to many places, seen many archives. The Harvard archive of pictures does not have what I'm about to show you. I haven't seen it in Berlin or any other place. But it just happened that Professor Eugenio Gallieri, who just passed away a few months ago, unfortunately, had a special pictures privately taken when he was young. He provided us with those pictures. Black and white pictures, of course. This is one of them. In a matter of 24 hours, our graphics, graphic designers managed to produce two different images. A polychrome image for the pillars or the, uh, of the Ali Rapu and monochrome. What he told us was that if you want to use the mirror work, that will satisfy your viewers. But if you want it to be royal and Safavid, use this one. That's what we did. The result was this. And you will see that out of this ruined place came out this result where the Shah and his entourage would watch the polo games and other matters in the Maidan. And you will see here 
the polar poles still remaining from the Safavi period. This is where they used to play polo. Also, in this huge Maidan, feasts were gathered, especially the Nowruz feast. Now, in our film on Isfahan, this is a footage from the film, you will see the fireworks that were carried out in Isfahan, according to Natanzi, the chronicle of the time. This one. On the first day of spring, the Maidan was also used for the New Year's celebrations. The festivities were usually followed by a variety of fireworks, which according to Natanzi, a chronicler of the time, included rockets, starbursts, lindens, the peacock's fan, the gold sprinkler, the seven-color narcissus, and other effects of this wondrous art. The combination of science and art epitomizes the very best in the scholarship. But we have to recognize that we are still imagining the past and that the physical models and digital images we use to build our reconstructions are very much shaped by our own conceptions and understandings. Therefore, picturing the past also involves an exciting detective work in extracting an accurate portrait of ancient civilization out of the heap of broken images. Our next case study regarding imagination is from the city of Chogamish in Khuzestan. Now, from Chogamish, the Oriental Institute and mainly Professor Abbas Alizadeh have gathered beautiful information and supplied this information to us uh, you will see here a seal impression on clay. And you can see the harp player here. Same person here. The drummer. Person with two horns. You can see the horns here. And of course, a singer who's singing very similar to what our singers do today, holding his hand over here. Now these uh, our seal impressions, the seals were uh, cylindrical and they rolled it over clays. Among these seals are beautiful impressions that could be used for our reconstructions. For instance, you can see houses here, silos for grains, another house, and this fortification where you can see people guarding the fortification are throwing stones to the enemy. So we use these seal impressions and combining it with the data that we had gathered from the University of Chicago, especially the map they provided us, the plan of the whole city, we superimposed the city on this map. And this is the result where you have the houses, the silo, the fortification, and a temple. It was so acclaimed by the university that they used it for the third edition of Chogamish excavations. This was the result. And also, we had uh, the reconstruction of the temple with overground water channels, as we can see, found during the excavations. And they also used this for their exhibition called Picturing the Past. Uh, similarly, we did uh, some detective work with regard to Sousa. There are certain uh, bronze statuettes in, at the Louvre, such as this one, that show us a ziggurat. Using the information that was provided to us by French archaeologists, we were able to remove them together and provide this 
image of the city of Susa, one of the cradles of civilization. Now, the images that I've shown you up till now are the ones that are used in our books. But the DVDs do have animations, 3D animations. What you're about to see right now are a variety of our reconstructions in the animations, which is about a few minutes. So please join me in watching these animations.
So far, we have seen the three pillars for reconstruction, science, art, and imagination. But there are usually five technical steps involved in any reconstruction. The first one is studying and selecting pictures, textual sources, maps, illustration, and different kind of books. The second part would be 3D modeling out of the sources. So for instance, for Shoga Zambia, we have used all these different diagrams, did the modeling, and then came the 3D final results, as you saw in the film. Again, for other locations, such as Tessifon, Avana Castra, we have used different stucco works of the Sasanian period, made the textures and the modeling, and you saw the final results. And this process has gone, gone uh, on for all of our reconstructions. Now, this is an interesting case study. This picture uh, or drawing actually by Pascal Coast in 1840 depicts a place in the city of Isfahan. Some people thought that this was the 40 column hall. But as you can see, there is the river here and there is one bridge in this part of the drawing. So we tried to gather all the information regarding this pavilion, which is completely lost. This is the only remaining picture of this pavilion, which was called the Pavilion of Mirrors by the Zayande Rood River. We found the plan and it started our job. So the final thing out of this came as such. There's a lot of mirror works, intricate and delicate mirror works that were carried out by our graphic designer. So this was actually something like this. And we added the king and the queen, of course, <laughs> actual people to make it more real. Now, in order to uh, get enough information about the Chael Sutun, the 40 column hall, and the Aine Khane, or the Hall of Mirrors, you will see part of our film on Isfahan, please, to show you the difference of the two. Chael Sutun, or the 40, 40 column, column hall, was nestled before a long and beautiful pool in a verdant garden. Here, the actual number of columns adds up to 20, which with their reflection in the crystal clear pool, constitute 40 columns, creating one of the incredible and unforgettable sights of Isfahan. This palace was built by Abbas II, perhaps the most capable ruler after his great-grandfather, Shah Abbas the Great. His portrait has been depicted on the interior wall paintings of the palace. The Chahel Sutun wall paintings are by far the best visual source for displaying the Safavid grandeur, their festivities, their musical instruments and courtly life. It was the setting for sumptuous receptions in 17th century Isfahan. Another pavilion quite similar to the Chahel Sutun was the Pavilion of Mirrors, which during the course of time has been completely destroyed. This pavilion was located on the southern banks of the river 
between Khaju and Shubi bridges. and contained a magnificent banquet hall with 18 beautiful pillars covered with a mosaic of mirror glass which supported its elegant ceiling, making the architecture like a jewel box filled with light. The reflection of the river and the surrounding bushes made beautiful scenery in the mirrors, forming an unforgettable vista. such as this one, with actual people. This is how it's done. This is computer-generated image. Then we have our actors with costumes for Pasargade, for instance. And I'm holding the branch of apple tree there. <laughs> <laughs> and when you combine the two composite, the two pictures, this is how it looks like. Also, inside this palace, uh, you will see the same kind of uh, technology. This is computer-generated image. Our actors. And then you combine it, it becomes alive and vigorous. Uh, let us assume that a question was raised towards me that uh, can you describe the 3D reconstructions of Iranian sites in only one word? I would say good. But if they ask me the same question and let me answer in two words, I would say not good. But if they tell me I have three words to answer, I would say not good enough. Uh, this is our capability, and you know we have done our best. Nonetheless, these books and films provide one of the most efficient means to show our true invigorating Iranian heritage. Uh, the response in Iran and abroad has been great. I'm quite happy about it. Uh, nevertheless, this could not have been done without the participation of many renowned scholars, about 70 of them, Dr. Curtis being one of them, Dr. Vesta Curtis, the second one, are present here, which I have had the privilege of interviewing throughout the world, some of whom I sent the reconstructions for their scrutiny, and some of them even accompanied me and my uh, crew to certain locations and sites. What you're about to see is the late Professor Richard Fry and Dr. Remy Bouchardlar at Persepolis, the royal audience at the Apadana Palace. It must have been a grand occasion to see the various people walking up the stairs, coming into these wonderful stone palaces, bringing their gifts in the presence of the king. Each delegation, led by a Persian or a Median noble, presented to the king, and then the explanation of what they brought, and then the festivities began celebrating 
the New Year's Day, which was symbolized by the lion devouring the bull, the new year ending the old year, according to many scholars. This was Persepolis. Thus, Persepolis was not a military or political capital. It was first and foremost a majestic ceremonial complex where representatives of 28 nations and satrapies of the Persian Empire gathered and celebrated the highest feasts in the presence of the king. En arrivant de la porte de toutes les nations, les visiteurs étrangers, les représentants des provinces, Coming up to Apadana, the visitor is quite impressed by the size of the columns, which were about 20 meters high. His heart is beating faster and faster. Then, passing through the giant doors that were 18 meters high, he would enter the huge audience hall. He can see a forest of columns, the multicolor carpets on the floor. the beautiful decoration of the walls. A huge ornamented roof. And finally, in the background, we would ultimately see the king himself seated on his throne. we can gain from Iranian heritage studies depends not only on the questions we ask about the past, but equally important on the content and visualizations chosen to illuminate the answers. Perhaps with the help of IHF, we may now remove them nearer to the heart's desire as Omar Khayyam wanted. Thank you very much.